Geeks, in this session for Pilates for Endurance, we're going to focus on the roll-up, the side kick, and the plank in just a 20-minute session. Come to your mat, stand at the foot, and this time stand in Pilates first. Hold your arms one crossed over the other, and then a couple of times bend and straighten your knees. Stay upright as you bend your knees, this time taking your heels off the floor to go a little bit lower, and then assert your heels back into the mat to stand up. Bend the knees until your heels come off the floor. Stay upright, reassert the heels to come back up. Just a couple more times like that. Keep growing taller as you press the heels down. And keep finding your two-way stretch so that this next time when you go down, you can drop all the way down to the mat with control, squeezing your heels together, then either reaching forward or putting your hands back to control your descent onto the mat and scoop back. Lay all the way back with your arms and legs fully extended. Take a deep breath in. And then on your exhale, reach yourself into your 100 position and begin. Inhale. Keep it nice and loose in your shoulder, but strong. See if you can keep settling your organs to the back of your body. We're halfway there. And after your last breath, end where you started with your legs down on the mat and your arms overhead. If you do have a strap, you're going to come up and put your strap around your feet, or you can use the underneath of your couch. You can also roll up a small pillow and put it underneath your low back. We're going for 10 roll-ups today. And you'll notice as I'm doing the roll-up, when I go forward, I'm trying to keep my seat anchored to the mat so that I have to go forward from everything else that's above. And my head just stays right on my spine as a passenger in the movement. If I wanted to, I could lock my knees and take my heels off the floor, but instead I'm gonna try to reach from way up in my upper back so that instead of my heels coming off, they stay on the mat and I can reach from somewhere deeper. Five more to go. Keep finding that moment where you can sit on your seat and take it forward and back from there. The feet might move a little bit, but the action of trying to keep the legs still and the feet tight in the strap is gonna be your secret to success. And then with your arms down by your sides, out in a T position or over your head grabbing your poles, take one leg in the air and do five leg circles. No need to take this super fast, just practice on doing what you did in your 100, reaching your upper body, away from your lower, and reverse, five. It's easy to get wrapped up in what's moving and what looks choreographic rather than what's anchoring on the mat. Switch your feet. And if it feels like your pelvis won't stay in place for today, make the circle a little bit more narrow or a little smaller in general, and reverse. Whichever way your arms are reaching, they're asserting themselves in that direction away from your trunk. And then you're going to roll right up to rolling like a ball and do 10 of these, squeezing your heels together. If this is new for you and you want to grab onto your heels and just rock back an inch to that place that you feel like you would fall back if you went any further and then come back up, this is a great way to build your endurance in your tummy muscles holding you in place. Keep driving the tines on your crowns up toward the ceiling as you rock your tail back. And for those of you rolling and rolling like a ball, you should have about three more to go. And then right into the stomach series, grabbing onto one leg and coming down. You can choose to leave your head down today, or you can bring your head all the way up and keep it there until your neck starts to feel like it's doing more work than the rest of you, and then you can lay it back down. So in this single leg stretch, the ideas are really still the same. You're trying to pull your upper body away from your lower. I've got my right hand on my right ankle and my left hand on my left. And we're gonna do about 10. If you end up doing more reps than I am, great. Just keep track of how high you go. 
and exhale, pull both legs in. Again, this one can be done with your head down. Reach your arms and legs, circle and come around. Yeah. So endurance really isn't about what level of the exercise that you're on. It's really just about continuing to move with integrity at a higher level of repetitions or a longer amount of time than what you're used to to keep pushing your muscular endurance. So you could have the most beginner move and do it more times than you're used to and you're building your endurance. So don't let the choice of the exercise or the level of the exercise play with your idea of building your endurance. And then we end with a scissor. Just a fancy word for the single straight leg stretch. And all I'm doing here is trying to leave my hands in place and bring my leg to my hands, whether your upper body is up or down. For a little more, you could put your arms down by your sides. You could even take them behind your head. You could even add a twist to this if you're so inclined. And then into the double straight leg stretch. As I pull my upper body away from my lower half, that's when I lower my legs so that my legs don't pull my body down the mat, yeah? And then when I pull my guts back, the body stays in place and the legs can work. Let's go for about five more reps. Find that energy of the legs wrapping and squeezing together and reaching up. You don't have to scrunch your toes to point your feet. You can just elongate your ankle. And then into the crisscross, back and forth. So not too fast, not too slow. When you crisscross, you are trying to get this side of the body to lengthen as if somebody could pull your elbow back to the back of the mat at the same time that you're rotating. Couple more reps, and then we go right up for the spine stretch. Legs are gonna go the same width as the mat. Today, one hand on top of the other so that you can push into the mat as you go forward and then switch hands. We're going right into the swan after this. So be thinking about how you'd like to transition. You're gonna be on your belly. Let's do two more spine stretches. I'm still trying to sit on my seat like in the roll up. Take my upper body away from my seat and stomach to the back. I like to just flip my legs around, come to my stomach. If you've got the dowel rods on your mat, go ahead and scoot up past your mat so you can put your hands on the rods. Otherwise, you're gonna put your hands right next to you like you're about to do a push up. Squeeze the legs together, push the feet down. And then on your inhale, reach your front forward and then help just a little bit with your arms. So if this is new for you, you're just gonna keep squeezing your legs together. Keep them together as you reach your front forward. If you're a little bit more advanced than that and you wanna take this into a rocker, feel free to go up, dive once or twice, lift yourself back up and then lower down only to go again. Inhale, lift, keep the legs together and then back down. A Couple more reps, whatever you're working on. And then we're gonna go right into the leg kick today. And we're gonna do a, a long set of several exercises to build some endurance in the abductors. So go ahead and press back into child's pose. Squeeze your knees together, sink your hips to your feet. And then when you're ready, you'll lie on one side with your body to the back of the mat. If you have a moon box and you wanna put your feet forward on the moon box, feel free to do that. Hand is gonna be resting in the head today, but the top hand is gonna stay on the mat or be behind your head. With the bottom leg pressing down, lengthen your upper body away from that without trying to lift your rib cage up off the mat. So keep this anchor here so it's not too hard on the shoulder, but actively reach more from the top and the bottom side of your body, even though they're asymmetrical. So point this, point Point this foot of the top leg and then swing it forward and swing it back. Now it's true, you want this to be dynamic, but you don't want it to go so far that's gonna pull you out of alignment and be all about where the leg kicks. So find the happy medium between being strong and powerful in the leg and having to two-way stretch your body. Let's do a couple more reps. This hand can always go down in front of you and I am trying to go behind me without thrusting my chest forward. Let's change it to the up and down. 
And again, we're not really counting, we're just trying to go to speed that feels like it's challenging to engage some of these ideas, but not so fast that we feel like we're flailing all over. Double check you're still pressing that leg, bottom leg down. Keep reaching your upper body away from that leg. And then bring that leg back down and let's bicycle back, heel, knee, toe. It goes back, touch your heel to your butt, bring your knee to your chest, bring your foot forward. So you can smooth all that together, but I feel like this position right here where you go behind you is pretty important because if you bring that knee forward right away, you miss this really beautiful quad stretch that you can get if you pull your heel in toward your bottom. And let's reverse the bicycle. So you keep moving while I stop and give you those little tidbits. Feel free to go faster or slower. If you hear something that doesn't quite compute, slow it down just a little bit. You keep going. And then we'll do the circles. So just medium-sized circles today. Hand is either on the mat or behind your head, but if you lose that two-way stretch, take a little bit of movement out and focus on the anchor. And circling, circling. Then you're gonna grab that ankle in front of you, put it on the floor and lift the bottom leg. Yeah, and this can be a pretty challenging position. I'm trying to push this knee up toward the ceiling. So I'm working a little bit in this hip here. I'm letting this leg pull my arm so I have something to reach away from with my upper body. Uh huh. Now circle that leg. And you're trying to get as much range of motion in there as you can. And reverse. I'm trying to touch my other thigh with my bottom thigh here. And then we're just gonna swing around and face the other direction and do that whole thing on the other side. Sometimes it ha doesn't have to be fancy. You just get there and you go. Top leg lifts and you swing it forward and back. And again, we're gonna keep the top toe pointed. We're gonna keep the bottom foot flexed. You're gonna be dynamic and strong in your moving leg, but prioritize the anchor. The anchor in this case is the bottom leg pressing down and the upper body pulling away. I mentioned on the other side that this is a little bit of an asymmetrical curve because these ribs are on the floor, but still do reach from this top side of your body. If we get too high up off the mat, it puts a lot of pressure on this shoulder. And then the exercise is all about not being in pain and that's no fun. And let's go to the up and down. Yep, and as you're doing this up and down, just take note that this is slightly in front of me. So if I have my legs forward and this leg is turned out, when I kick it up, it's not gonna be right in line with the rest of my body. Yeah, so don't hold yourself to getting that leg at like a 90 degree angle with respect to the floor. A few more times. And let's try the bicycle. So it turns into parallel, it goes behind you. Keep that thigh back there as you kick your heel to your butt, then pull your knee into your chest and reach it forward. And the moment of truth for me is when this leg comes behind me and I'm really trying to pull myself away so that I don't end up flopping over on the mat. A couple more bicycles this direction. And then we'll reverse. Take a little tension out of somewhere where you don't think you need it and find a little bit more two-way stretch from somewhere a little bit deeper. Maybe that's your kidneys at the back of your body just spreading out, helping you find a little more space down there. Yep, and then we've got one more, the circles. So you'll go medium-sized circle. Sometimes we go all the way up and around to the back. Sometimes we just make the tiny circles. Today I'm just treating it as if you were doing like a kneeling sidekick, reverse the circle. Hopefully you're feeling this on the outer butt of both legs, but primarily on the top. And then you're gonna grab that ankle, put it on the floor in front of you, and lift and lower the bottom leg. So when you do your sidekick series, you may not do all of these things, and there's even a couple more in there. But see that if the next time that you do the sidekick series, you can push yourself to a few more reps than you're used to. If you're used to five, push it to eight. If you're used to eight, maybe push it to 10, and circle for eight. If you start to get to that point where your two-way stretch is fatiguing, is nothing is working out, that's when you're done. And reverse. Remembering that the two-way stretch is always the underlying priority in every movement that we do in Pilates. Then you're gonna come onto your belly again because we need a little bit more extension. Reach your arms forward into an X with your arms at the corners, your feet at the corners. Then lift your upper body by pulling yourself forward swan-like and lift one arm and leg in the air and hold. As you continue to reach these two limbs away from your center, press down into the two bottom limbs so that you can get this action of the belly pulling away from the mat and the pubic bone sinking down into the floor. 
simultaneously but slowly you're gonna switch which arm and leg are on the bottom just so you can feel if there's any rotation in your pelvis. A lot of multifidi work here for the spine to stay in place as the arms and legs change. And then you're gonna switch and hold. Exhale, switch and hold. Inhale, switch and hold. Exhale, switch and hold. Again, height not a priority, but rather link. Length. I could come all the way up to here, but then looks what ha look what happens in my line. Keep that nine lo line nice and long so you can feel the center working for you too. And then bring it back down again. Put your forehead down. Move the arms and legs a little closer together. Take a deep breath in. Lift everything off the mat and swim. Let's go for two more breaths. If you're feeling too much in your low back, if it's muscular, just keep working. But if you feel like it's in the spine, lower your upper body again a little and just use the arms and legs. Then in one smooth move, press yourself into child's pose. And then come all the way up to your knees and we'll side bend. Hands are gonna go behind the head today, pretending you're on the short box. Lengthen one side and one elbow up toward the ceiling and come back. I'm still trying to reach this side out away from me so that my, I'm not trying to get down there, but rather lengthening myself out from the power, the power of the foundation, which in this case is the knees on the floor, the kind of shoelaces area of the top of your foot, the whole shin, the inner thighs pulling in, the pelvis stacking right over the knees the length in the front of your hips. A little bit harder, both arms up like you're grabbing the pole of the short box. I wanna make it a little harder still. Reach over like you're prepping for the kneeling sidekick series and then come right back up. And we'll just kinda tick tock this back and forth. Kind of challenging to land on the ground with your hand far away from you and then keep your pelvis approximately over your knees rather than bringing your pelvis back as you try to go side to side. One more time, whichever variation you're working on, you can always back it up a variation. Nice, and then we'll roll one more time. Feet go to the front of your mat and we'll seal. Take the feet, hands underneath the heels. Keep your feet higher than your heart so you're on that little balance point above your crevice there. And three little claps, one, two, three. Up, one, two, three. Notice I'm not clapping my feet together. I'm just opening and closing my hips so that it feels challenging to move that fast. One more seal, and then you'll come up to standing. Turn around and face the other direction and we'll do just three push-ups. Take a deep breath in, roll down, walk out. Yep, you're sitting, setting yourself up for a plank here. So as you do that one push-up, focus on your two-way stretch. Roll yourself back up. And this is typically how a Pilates push-up would go. You would roll down, walk out for four counts to set yourself, two-way stretch into your push-up, and then come back up. And we'll do one more. This time when you push up from your push-up, you're gonna stay in your plank and hold it. Keep reaching your heels to the back of your mat. Keep doing that thing that we talked about where you pulled your pubic bone down toward the floor and your belly up toward your face when you're doing your swan. Stay in that plank position and if you need to, you could always come down to your hands and knees and just take one arm and leg away from you. Yep, so if this is more your speed where you're at today, keep this action going. If you're still in that plank and you want a little bit more of a challenge, you're gonna lift one leg, put it back, kind of like the leg pull, but no rock of the bottom foot. Keep that same alignment in the pelvis as you had here so that you're not tipping into an anterior tilt in your plank. You wanna make it a little harder still, you're gonna take that leg up and out to the side to tap your toe, keeping your pelvis level, bring it right back. Lift that leg up, tap the toe without tipping your pelvis. Lift it up, bring it right back. A couple more of those. Maybe you're still here on your hands and knees, reaching forward. You can always back up a layer if you need to. That's part of what endurance is all about, is kind of modul modif modifying the speed so that you can just keep going. Endurance, the ability to keep doing something, muscular endurance, the ability of the muscles to keep doing something, you're almost there. Lift one leg up and hold it for three breaths. 
You want a little bit more of a challenge, lift that opposite arm with all those things still in place. Hand goes down, leg goes down, lift the other leg, three breaths. More two-way stretch, more shoulders away. Maybe you lift that opposite arm. One more breath, lower the arm, lower the knees, child's pose. I think we'll end there today. Nice work, everyone. Roll yourself up and maybe give yourself a little bit of time to do something like a calf stretch or maybe even a figure four over your leg. I'll catch you next time for Pilates and Endurance. Thanks for being here.